we have more media here than we've had uh, during the course of the season. So it's not comments about a particular game. So it's just love to open it up to you for opening remarks of what today means to you. Tough. Um, felt it was time. And uh, I've had a great run <coughs> at this place. And I remember when it hit me that I wanted to coach here. <coughs> it was when we were coaching at Boston University and we were playing here, playing UNH. I remember driving back on the campus and looking at things. And I was coaching in a city school and thought that was a cool place, but whenever I walked back on this campus, <coughs> I knew it was the place I wanted to be. A bunch of years later when coach brought me back, first day he took me to the indoor track, watching guys work out. Barry Barassa, Mike Gallagher, Dave Campbell running around, and I knew I was home. <coughs> This place has done so much <clears throat> for me, so much for my family. Uh, it just always felt like home, and uh, it was, it was. The community uh, embraced our beliefs and embraced who we were and what we are. Um, that I learned from Bill Bowes. You know, we're uh, a guy who was the CEO of UNH Athletics and UNH Football, taught me the right way to do things. And then uh, as this journey went through, was fortunate to have a ton of people be part of a great journey. And it started with, with coaches that had a vision, you know, and, and uh, everybody knows the success Chip has had. He was a huge part of it. Sean Devine, Mike Dawson. The vision was always to be a great academic school first in some ways, making sure that people understood the mission. And the last thing we wrote on the wall was to be the national champs. Never got to that last part, but the journey between the first part to that part has been unbelievable. Uh, to the people in this room, and especially Marty Scarano, Can't thank you enough. Uh, the friendships, the journey with these guys, ups and downs, wins, losses, watching their teams play and that stuff, it's been awesome. It's been great. I've loved every minute of it. Marty and the administration, uh, Jim Dean, Mark Huddleston, Joan Leitzel people that gave me an opportunity to do this have given us the opportunity to be successful by giving us everything we needed to do. It isn't a surprise that we turned when Marty became the AD. I know Coach Bowes has said once or twice to me that if he was the AD when he was here, he never would have retired. He had a vision for football and had a vision for athletics at this level, coming from Colgate and Penn State, that again, gave us an opportunity to be successful. And that's all you can ask for. And that's all you ever want as a coach is to give that opportunity. Um, his work <laughs> with the FCS committee over the years <laughs> probably got his tail in a little bit of trouble with what we're doing with some of the votes, but can't thank you enough, Marty, how that all went down. To my family, wow. <laughs> they supported me, were there for me every step of the way. The two boys from Timmy and Tommy on the bus rides, the trips to the playoff games, in my room, ball boys on the sidelines, what an experience for me as a father. And then Jenny. And uh, 
wouldn't have known if a ball would had stuffing in it, had air in it or what. Didn't care. She was the queen of taking care of the kids and the coaches here without worrying about what the X's and O's were. And it brought me down to earth and put my feet on the ground a million times. So I can't thank her enough for what she did. And then to the players. The outreach today and in a lot of different ways in the past couple days and weeks, some of the kids that have come back to campus, some of the kids that texted me, wow, man, it really makes you feel good about what we do. You know, they might not get it when they're here. Uh, some get it sooner than others. But when you get a note or a text or an email from somebody that tells you that you made an impact on their life because of what you did, what you said, not how you learned football or whatever it was, that is the greatest reward you can get through coaching. So that's the story. And I'm going to stick to it. Um, I'm going to miss coaching. I'm going to miss being on the field. I'm going to be miss being in the weight room, I'm going to miss being on the indoor track. We miss all those things. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to miss chasing kids to classes. I'm not going to miss making sure they're doing the right things all the time, which we did a great job in. But I'll miss being in the locker room singing with the boys um, after a great win. I'll be in the, in the, and miss being in the, in the room with them when we, we hum Seven Nation Army. It's just traditions that you have that, that, that you're going you're gonna to miss in a journey that we're all on. So to them, thank you. Thank you so much for everything you ever did for me. It was special, and I'll never, ever forget it. So, questions? Go ahead, Jamie. I have two questions. Jamie Staking from yeah. Channel 9. Yeah. You're so emotional. Is any of that a sign that there's a part of you that thinks maybe <laughs> you know, Jamie, you, you, if people know who I am, they know I'm this, you know, and, and you don't see it. And there's so many people don't see it all the time, but people that know me know I'm this. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just think it's time. And I feel, you know, I took a walk in College Woods today, Jamie. You know what College Woods is? You know, and uh, really started thinking about this sitting here doing it if I was going to be able to hold it together. I love this place. I love the people. I'm gonna miss that, I'll tell you that. I told you I just love coaching. But there's a lot of other things nowadays that, that go into this that challenge you uh, in a lot of different ways. And um, that stuff I'm not used to. And, and, and I don't know at 66 if I wanna fight that fight, you know? So I don't have a good answer for that. I just have the answer that I just gave you because, you know, that's where I think I'm at. And then my other question was, I mean, there's, the legacy is so great that all the accolades, the awards, the All-Americans, the, the streak of going to the NCAA tournament, but what are you most proud of as, as you walk away? Uh, that the kids represented the University of New Hampshire, the state of New Hampshire, and this athletic department with class and did it the right way. You know, and uh, we didn't have everything that everybody else had, but I believe we had more because of the way the kids were, the way they embraced it, you know. And, and, and we played, we, we wanted to play with a chip on our shoulder, you know, and I, and I, and, that was from me growing up in a, in a situation that was, was an awful lot like this. But wherever we went, you know, I would make sure they knew the point that, that New Hampshire was there, that New Hampshire had played, and New Hampshire was going to leave a, a footprint wherever it was. And we did an awful lot of that, you know. That's what, you know, probably made me the most proud. Well, <laughs> what did he say about the fairy godmother and all that stuff? No, nah, I, I didn't get that call, Raj. <laughs> uh, could, 
could you go into some of the factors, specifics that you weighed when you made your decision, and, and when did you? Ah, <laughs> uh, it, it's been weighing on me for for over a year or so, Raj. You know, um, being away for a year gave me insight to what it was like to be not around football for a year, and, and that didn't taste good. But when I got back, you know, I just. I just, you know, had to, we had to fight an awful lot. And, and, and not just this program, but this whole athletic department. I mean, COVID was tough. And, um, you know, we lost a game to Albany in COVID. And, and, and then um, I said to someone very close to me that I, that I went to school and played with here that New Hampshire never loses games like that. You know, and that disappointed me. And, um, you know, <laughs> took a step back and looked at it. And, 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 and went through a spring where he didn't play any games and then get to the summer where, you know, we got in here as best we could with, you know, our kids coming back on campus. And then obviously winning the first three games, you feel great. The losing didn't bother me. The losing these last eight games, and one guy who called me today, a reporter, is asking, you know, said, you know, you did this, you've never done this before. That, that's not it. It's just, it, it's just a feeling that I, that I had, Raj. And, and, and I felt that, that, that my message to the kids was there. Most of them got it and, and understood it. I, I always felt that I wanted more from, from that, that to go. So that combined with just the ever-changing landscape of, of, of college football and athletics. You know, um, we haven't been hit by the portal like a bunch of people are talking about all that stuff. I just, recruiting, you want to talk about how that's changed? You know, that, that, that's been different. So there's a lot of things that you're going to have to put enormous amount of energy into and effort into that I'm not, that I'm not used to. Now, um, the challenges before, I always attack them head first, hands first, hands on. Just feel like that this time there's better people to do that than, than Sean McDowell. There's better people in the office across the hallway that can attack that stuff. Any game, Sean, or season is um, particularly satisfying for you? Uh, I know there's so many, but is there one at the top that you think about more than others? I kind of like knew this question was coming, and and, and uh, I think the Georgia Southern game. <laughs> um, it was unbelievable. To be our first playoff game, you know, and uh, getting in the locker room and, and seeing our name come up and you're sitting there going, holy, you know what, we're playing Georgia Southern. And then I'm sitting next to Chip and he's hitting me and we keep looking and next thing you know the game's on ESPN prime time at 6 o'clock and he's hitting me again and, and I'm kidding, everybody's jumping around, I go, Chip, well, what, what's the problem? He goes, they're really good. <laughs> and, 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 and so I go, we ain't got to worry about that right now. And uh, he, 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 <laughs> he walks up to the office, I come up later on, and he goes, and, 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 and he never panicked. And I was always like, we'll beat everybody. He goes, woof. He goes, you know what? And he started naming it and this and that. So we watched the tape. <laughs> and the great thing, our kids had no idea, Raj, who they were, where we were going. Get down to the game, drive down there and do all that stuff. <laughs> And you walk in warm-ups and you look and it's like our banners out there, 2001, 2002. You know, they've been 15 years in the playoffs, you know, and you go, uh-oh, you know. But our kids, they got ahead 14 nothing, and uh, had a discussion with Mike Dawson. Our, I talked to Dawson about it today. And I said, what's 14 and 14? He goes, 28. I said, what's 28 and 28? 56. And then I can't tell you what he said after that to me because he was getting to the point that if they keep scoring, they're going to score 100, you know. We come back and score. We come back and um, just played our tails off. And uh, the whole trip, we stayed at a great hotel. There were alums there, there were the kids. Uh, I've never forgotten it. R.J. Harvey, 56-yard touchdown run. Nobody could catch him. You know, a black kid from New Hampshire running down the sidelines. They couldn't catch him. It was great, you know. And... Uh, we played that day, and uh, Ricky took a safety at the end of the game, 
and everybody thought we were pretty smart. We had no idea what we were doing. You know, no idea. So that game, but it set the footprint that when we went to play people, that New Hampshire was coming to play, and, and we were going to give everything you got. <laughs> now, the next week, we had our tails kicked pretty good by Montana and got brought back down to earth. But that first trip to Georgia Southern with all those kids was, was fabulous. It was fabulous. Sean, in 1 and 2, you had a couple of rough seasons early in your tenure. What were your thoughts then, and did you think you'd be able to turn things around and get where you ultimately went? You know, um, it was starting to be a changing of the guard around here, Al. You know, people were coming and people were going and, and, and administration and everything, you know. And um, Marty stuck by me, you know. And uh, <clears throat> when those times were tough, our kids stuck by me. And um, we had to, to, to make sure that they understood where we were going was the right direction. Everybody here, you know. And uh, when we got through those two times, those two years, and, and, and the great year with Johnny Hart and in those guys in, in, 2000 and in, in, in 2003, when we won the last couple games there, you know, and those kids holding the, the, the picture of the musket still in my office, you know, it was such a sense of accomplishment. We knew where we were going. We were just struggling to get there, and we were hoping that people had patience, and they did. I don't know if that happens all the time anymore in our profession, you know, but our administration, Marty, and the people stood with us and can't thank them enough. Coaching tree, Sean. <laughs> People say Ryan and Chip all the time, but there's so many more. Um, you see these coaching changes, and somebody gets elevated to OC, and you look at his resume, and it spent seems like they all spent the year in the answer. Um, how much pride do you take in that? Guys Great pride. Good. Great pride. I also am smart enough to understand that they're the reason why I was so successful. You know, um, the guys that 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 have have been here and. You know, there have been a lot that have moved on, and a lot of them called me today, and, you know, um, can't thank them enough. You know, many a night sitting in that, in that office over there debating, arguing, going through things, and having them buying into it, and then just watching them grow and develop, you know. Um, Joe Conlon at Fordham, uh, Tony Trish, <laughs> 2.30 in the morning, flip-flops out in the hallway here talking about press coverage, you know. Just guys like that that, uh, that move on. Sean McGowan at Yale, you know. Uh, Alex Grinch, you know, the defensive coordinator now at USC. Just saw him getting on a plane the other day in the dark, going from Oklahoma to Alabama, you know. I take great pride in that, you know. Um, also know that they were really talented people when they were here. And again, they taught our kids well, coached well, taught me a lot of valuable lessons and uh, left their footprint on this program in a lot of ways. Coach, does, I may have this wrong, but does Manchester West High School deserve to go out here? Is that where it all began no. coaching-wise in the Grand Nope. Started at Parkside Junior High. My first head coaching job was JV, oh, was eighth grade basketball, you know? First quarter of my first game, it was 20 to, 20 to nothing, and I threw a hockey player in, Mike, Mike Sullivan, through a jump hook and we were down 20 to two, you thought I might have won the championship, you know? Um, yes, West High, and I'll tell you, Manchester. Pretty cool place, a lot of good people. Got an opportunity to see New Hampshire in a different way than it was just the University of New Hampshire. You know, that's what Durham was to me and what this area was, but Manchester was a, was a pretty cool place at that time. The, the, the high school, Athletics, the, the Babe Ruth at, uh, sports, the, the, the Pop Warner football, just everything they did up there was, was, was done first rate, first class, and was unbelievably successful. You know, we weren't at much at West, um, but, you know, we, we had a guy like Eddie Kissel, Kissel gave me an opportunity to coach, and it, it was a great, great, great adventure for me for my first five or six years. What, what did you coach there at West? I was an assistant football coach. And I was a JV softball coach, a women's JV softball coach, which I'm very proud to tell you, we were 30 and two over two years of my span of being head coach there. And I still get notes from some of my young ladies that, that, that played for me, telling them how much fun they had, you know? So it was a great experience in that town. 
question, Mr. Coach Mack? Coach, you've been a uh, mentor to a lot of people in this department, a lot of your players, coaches. You talked about the coaching tree. Um, been a real leader. There's a lot of change around here. Advice for younger uh, coaches getting involved here or staff members or even student athletes here? Yeah, well, a lot of wisdom. first thing is walk the hallways. Don't get locked in a cocoon. You know, um, I learned that from Bill, and I learned that from Dick Umilly, um, that this place is special because of the people in the building. And it's really important, whether you're winning, losing, or what you're doing, to get to know them and their programs. And, you know, uh, I watched that from afar with those two guys and learned from them and, and did it. And, um, the trips up to Billy's office. You know, <clears throat> he has screwed two kids in 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 in, in, this, in their careers here. You know, Ryan Harry and Tim, Tommy McDonald. <laughs> and uh, other than that, you know, you sit there and talk with him. You know, uh, you stop by and, and you see Robin Melducci. You know, and <laughs> probably the only woman I would let coach a football player that I've ever met. Tough as nails. Great standards, you know, you'll miss that. Uh, you know, Jimmy Belanger's left, you know, those guys. Uh, you meet some of these people along the journey that can help you along, that go through some of the problems that you have. And, and you go sit down and talk to them, you know, and then go watch the other teams play. And, and it was great for us to be in that room right across from there because I could walk out, see the hockey team walk by, see the gymnastics girls walk by. And, you know, and yell at him for making noise in the hallway and watch him scurry and start laughing. But it, it was great, you know. And, and then for us, you had the, the, the prime time seat in the McDonald family to come in and watch a basketball game, go to a hockey game, you know, watch, watch a soccer, watch a field hockey game. This college town and this town in particular thrived on that, and I think we need to get back to that. I think you need to get back to that, Colin. And so that's what I would tell a young coach. Go adventure outside your office and talk to other people and get to know them a little bit better. No further questions, Coach. That's good, Murph. Thanks.